Your Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, allow me to begin by congratulating the Union for International Cancer Control for convening yet another flagship World Cancer Congress. I'm deeply honored to have been asked to keynote its opening. We have an incredible opportunity to make a quantum stride. This Congress is the first convening after the week of the 73rd United Nations General Assembly where heads of state and ministers from all over the world have prompted more urgent action on non-communicable diseases, cancer, diabetes, heart and lung diseases. As you know, these conditions kill 41 million people each year. 18.1 million new cancer cases and 9.6 million cancer deaths have been reported in 2018 alone. The third global high-level meeting on non-communicable diseases was a milestone in our attempts to further achievement of SDG target 3.4. And action against cancer is a very important cog in this chain. At the heels of the high-level meeting, a new global initiative was launched and funding was committed to treat children with the aim of reaching at least a 60% survival rate for children with cancer by 2030. This by itself translates into one million lives. This new target represents a doubling of the global cure rate for children with cancer. And I want to congratulate the cancer community for your efforts in pushing for this and seeing to it that this target gets widely adopted. Today, we have an incredible opportunity, not only because of these commitments, but also because some action is underway. Platforms are being established which can be scaled up to step up our fight against cancer. The Global Independent High-Level Commission on Non-Communicable Diseases, which I have the honor of co-chairing, recognizes the changing landscape. And the recommendations of its first report and further work in the pipeline is aimed at tapping these opportunities to bring a quantum change. As a commission, we recognize that world leaders will convene again in 2019 during the high-level meeting on universal health coverage on the margins of the 74th United Nations General Assembly, and that it is critical to embed NCDs within the fabric of its political declaration. One of the recommendations of our first report centered on setting priorities and the importance of focusing on evidence-based solutions, which can be critical to the achievement of SDG 3.4. Prevention of cervical cancer through vaccination, screening, and treatment is an example of such prioritization. As a commission, we recognize that today healthcare is being disrupted and redesigned by banks, by telecommunication service providers, and internet based retail companies. Their partnerships with health providers, with insurance industry, with the interplay of big data analytics is redesigning healthcare in poor countries many of which are jump-starting straight to 4G and 5G in a world which is on track to meet digital technology and connectivity targets. In this process, the health ecosystem is also becoming more chronic care-centric, more conducive to addressing NCDs with a greater focus on prevention and early intervention. And we must make these capabilities work for cancer screening, early diagnosis, treatment and palliative care. Our commission will have a work stream to thread together these opportunities, to work towards ensuring that the future of health is also about the future of NCDs, of which cancer is a salient pillar. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are conscious that as we speak, non-communicable diseases and in fact cancer underpins most of the innovations in healthcare from artificial intelligence to diagnose pathologies and gene editing to regenerative and precision medicine, immunotherapy, and cancer genomics. Our commission is emphasizing the role that public entities need to play in this regard to set norms and standards and address ethical patient safety, regulatory, and human resource capacity issues ahead of the curve. It is critical that we accord attention to overcoming financial access barriers, which will inevitably deepen as these new therapies become available. We must promote greater equity and ensure access to treatment and surgery for all. We must bolster social protection for cancer and protect patients and families from foregoing healthcare, from catastrophic health expenditure, 
and medical impoverishment, which unfortunately goes hand in hand with cancer treatment across the world. I urge you to recognize that disparities in cancer survival in high income and resource limited settings are an aberration and are in fact unethical. Our commission recognizes the importance of partnerships to overcome these constraints. For a case in point, let's take the example of breast cancer. In United States, 90% of women with breast cancer survive five years. In Uganda, only 46% do. And in Gambia, it is a mere 12%. Of course, complex health systems constraints are at play here, but workers' shortages are at the core. And if business as usual continues, we will not be able to overcome this shortage. By the end of 2030, we will still have a shortage of 14 million workers. The potential solution to overcome this crisis for the poorest countries today are rooted in partnerships. Today, platforms are being developed where a range of stakeholders are trying to draw on comparative advantage. Cancer societies are simplifying complex cancer treatment guidelines. Programmers are building them into online tools which could potentially be accessed by doctors with an internet connection in under-equipped hospitals to jumpstart human resource um, qualitative and, uh, I beg your pardon, quantitative constraints. The other dimension to this partnership is commitment by drug manufacturers to discounting prices of expensive anti-cancer therapy for these markets. And in fact, this is being done for 11 countries in Africa. And it is critical that we learn as we implement, refine, and programmatically scale up such models in an evidence-based manner to achieve equity and impact. In view of the potential of partnerships, our commission has recommended a fresh approach to partnerships, one that is based on health is the priority principle. We recognize UICC is attempting to break new grounds here, which is evidenced in your recent partnerships with Access Accelerated around the City Cancer Challenge Initiative, which I believe is predicated on the potential of cities to increase access to cancer services given that 50% of the population now lives in cities. With your membership base of more than 1,000 organizations in more than 160 countries, UICC is uniquely positioned to impact change through convening, capacity building, and advocacy. This, of course, needs to be combined with technical support from development partners and South-South learning to develop and implement national cancer plans and establish population-based registries in developing countries. These are initial stepping stones for strengthening early detection, diagnosis, and timely treatment of cancer, which we know will make a significant contribution to the 2025 and 2030 targets and improve outcomes of these deadly chronic diseases. And of course, we know that cancer can lead the way in many areas of NCDs. In fact, it can be a pathfinder. It is also critical that we continue with our fight against tobacco, alcohol, air pollution, and obesity to reduce the global cancer burden. There is also an important and perhaps still under-recognized role for promoting physical activity as part of NCDs and cancer prevention and its potential contribution to treatment and care. I urge the strengthening of healthcare systems to assess and counsel patients as well as implement community-wide initiatives. Heads of state and governments have to take responsibility and lead the efforts as committed at the high-level meeting. We need investments in human resources, health infrastructure, and referral care. The high-level commission on NCDs stands with you in solidarity today as you accelerate action to integrate cancer control into the World Health and Development Agenda. And I want to pay tribute to all of you, the multi-sectoral cancer community who have convened here. This is evidence of your commitment to step up the fight against cancer. I thank you.